In this video, we'll discuss the inner workings of rule-based chatbots, primarily focusing on Eliza as a case example. Rule-based chatbots have been around for a long time. Eliza was first created in the 1960s, which is crazy if you think about it. Personal computers didn't even exist, the internet didn't exist, yet people still wanted to have conversations with these like massive mainframe computers. Uh, so rule-based chatbots are also relatively straightforward to implement. So they're a good starting point for developers who are creating their first dialogue system or who don't have existing background knowledge in machine learning. Rule-based chatbots all more or less have the same framework, just with varying levels of complexity. Since I'm mainly focusing on Eliza in this video, I'll start off by providing a bit of background for that project specifically. Eliza is a chatbot that's designed to function as a Rogerian psychologist. For people who aren't familiar with that term, a Rogerian psychologist is basically a psychologist who just repeats your problems back to you or asks sort of general questions to prompt you to provide more information. They don't provide any novel or original information. And because of this, it's relatively easy to create chatbots that function as Rogerian psychologists because they can operate using a relatively small amount of rules while still seeming natural. On the right here, I've listed sort of the classic Eliza dialogue example which illustrates this type of conversation very well. We have a user complaining about their boyfriend, and then Eliza is just asking the user for more information or parroting what the user just said. The way that Eliza does this, and more generally the way all rule-based chatbots do this, is by matching patterns in the input and then transforming slots from those patterns into responses. So, for example, we might have a pattern like what you see here, where we're basically searching for the word you, followed by anything, followed by me. And we might set up our code so that when that pattern is matched in a user's input, we transform the input into what makes you think I blank you, where blank refers to whatever was between you and me in the original text pattern. The final result would end up looking something like this. In ELISA, there are enough different patterns that in some cases an input might match multiple patterns, so somehow the program has to decide which transformation to go with. The way that it solves this problem is by ranking them based on how specific or general the keywords they're searching for are. For example, let's imagine that we have two rules. One of them matches the word I, followed by anything else, and the other matches the word everybody, followed by anything else. These are both pretty general keywords, but everybody is a little bit more specific, so it's a higher ranked rule. Because of this ranking, if the user says something like, I know everybody made a cooler chatbot, Eliza will implement the transformation associated with the second rule. So the output will end up being, who in particular are you thinking of? In the previous slide, I talked about what happens if multiple keywords are matched in an input, but there might also be cases where no words are matched, so we have to prepare for those. Eliza handles this by defaulting to a sort of non-committal response, saying things like, please go on, that's very interesting, or I see. Basically the same kinds of things people say when they realize they need to respond to someone, but they haven't really been listening to what they were saying. There's also a second strategy that Eliza uses, which is a little bit more complex. If no keywords are matched in an input, sometimes Eliza will try to recall older information from memory. The program decides which information to store as facts using the same pattern matching rules that I already discussed. So for example, if the pattern for my followed by anything else is matched, Eliza might not only perform the specified transformation, but also store that information on a stack for later use. So now that we've covered the basics of ELISA, we can see what this process looks like in practice. 
I'm going to go ahead and work through a sample dialogue with a simple implementation of ELISA. In practice, implementations might have a lot more rules and rankings, but they'll work the same way overall as what you see here. So to start with, we have a list of rules, an empty memory stack, and an input from our human user. We go ahead and feed the input to our system and check to see which pattern matches. It looks like most of the patterns are looking for the word I or my, so we end up matching the most general pattern, which just transforms the input into an output question of in what way. We carry on, and now our person goes on to elaborate a bit more. We feed this new input to the system, and we see that it matches a pattern that searches for the word always somewhere in the text. This pattern is really highly ranked, so it supersedes the more general pattern that we matched previously. We go ahead and output, can you think of a specific example? So our little example person is still proceeding with the conversation. So now they go ahead and think of a specific example and they tell the system that their boyfriend made them come to this session. Now we check our set of rules and we see that this input actually matches two different patterns. One of them suggests an output and one of them suggests storing this information in memory for later use. We go ahead and do both. First, we go ahead and apply the transformation necessary to get our current output. Then, we store the suggested transformation in our stack because this might come in handy in the future if we have an input that doesn't match any of the patterns. Our example person elaborates further, sort of expertly playing into Eliza's game, uh, and we match this new input with a pattern that searches for the word I'm and go ahead and output the, the results. And in the last step that we'll examine in this video, now the example person says something that isn't matched by any of the patterns aside from the default. Now we have a choice, and this choice would actually be encoded internally as some sort of rule. We can use the stored fact from memory, or we can just output the default response. We decide to go ahead and pop our fact from the memory stack, and then we output it to the user. So we just worked through an entire ELISA case example. And we can look at the more formal algorithm behind the process to see how some of this looks in a more programmatic format. You can see that it's pretty straightforward. First, you find the keyword-based patterns that match your input, and you choose the highest ranked keyword to focus on. Assuming that one of those keywords exists in your input, there might be multiple transformation rules that could potentially apply depending on how complex your set of rules is. You choose the highest ranked rule and apply the specified transformation. You might have some additional rules that indicate when to store facts on your stack. If so, and if those apply, you go ahead and perform that operation. Backtracking a bit, maybe none of the keywords from your rules existed in the input. In that case, you either produce your default output or pop the top fact stored in your memory stack and use that. Even though ELISA is pretty old, it's still used in a lot of applications today, which really speaks to the longevity of this approach. A different clinical psychology chatbot called Perry was actually the first known system to pass the Turing test, uh, which is a popular test in artificial intelligence in which people try to guess whether they're interacting with a chatbot or a real person. The idea is that if someone is not able to accurately determine that your system is a chatbot rather than a real person, then your chatbot is exhibiting intelligent behavior. In practice, there are a lot of other things that go into determining intelligence, and no one's even really sure how to answer that question. But rule-based chatbots are really fun and relatively easy to implement, first step in that direction.